Hi, welcome to Facts and Blog and Podcast. At night, but whatever you do, don't put the blame on you. Blame it on the rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Millie Vanilla. I think hey, I'm good. Facts and cups. It is. It's BS. I got this paper facts and cups. You want to go grab one of the dirty mugs? I don't think so. <laughs> Welcome back into the Facts and Blog and Podcast, a very special episode this week as we prepare for the Saturday launch of uh, 8-6 Blackout. And uh, it's poetic, Jay, because it's launching on 8-6. On very poetic. You see what we did there? <laughs> uh, totally accidental. Well, yeah, totally just by happenstance. Yes. And uh, so obviously barrels have been out on the market for a little while. We did open up AR-10s to pre-order. We have bolt actions coming soon. A uh, mix of parts and accessories and things like that. Um, so for those of you who have already uh you know, pre-ordered your Sentinel, your Fax and Sentinel AR-10 and 8.6. Uh, those will be shipping uh, pretty much right around the time of of this podcast. Yeah. And uh, but for those of you who are like, eh, I'm not sure about pre-order, I want to wait until they're officially available. You know, now's the time. So Saturday morning, 8.6, uh, you'll be able to order your 8.6 Blackout AR-10. And um Today, Jay and I are going to run down some of the features, go through some uh, general FAQs uh, that we've been getting and uh, some of the the best practices that we've seen. Um, you know, but overall, Jay, like from the product direction side, you know, what have you seen with 8.6 of just like what it's meant to us as a as a company and maybe some of the you know feedback and response that we've gotten from it just you know from where you stand and 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 product direction and development you know what do you think uh 86 has opened up well i think it's been a pretty exciting project for us um you know q q approached us about um making the barrels um and uh you know we had success in it where um a number of other people failed mm -hmm. and you know it was it was fun in the um in the development side you know the the uh extremely fast twist rifling uh right. has, has been a really interesting thing around here um yeah you know tooling design uh just really working on the machines and and how they how they process something this this fast is right. um you know it's, it's been pretty exciting it's been pretty interesting um being the the first company that has developed this capability um you mm -hmm. know it's it's been cool yeah you know it's it's been a good thing to be involved in yeah and it's and it's definitely spawned some interest in um alternate twist rates for other rounds as well yeah. you know and so like earlier this summer we launched um, a couple of kind of what we call like oddball barrels because they've just been like customer requests and things like that. Like, you know, like 13.9 uh, inch barrels and 12.5 inch barrels. But then like for 300 blackout, um, you know, going down to a, a like a six inch, I think a seven and a half mm -hmm. and, you know, doing a one in five twist on those instead of like a standard one in eight. And I think, you know, people are going, OK, there's kind of spawning off of 8.6, there are some other things we can do here with either round stabilization or energy on target, if you have the right ammo, um, you know, for for even other calibers, which I which I think has, you know, been interesting as well. Yeah. I mean, I think the whole the whole concept of of using um using the super fast twists, um, not just as stabilization, but you know, for for energy on target and to interact with some of these um expanding projectiles um you know it's it's an interesting uh thing happening in the industry right now i think that um you know we're certainly um experimenting with with how this uh applies or translates into other calibers um and you know i, th I think we're gonna see um a lot of interest in in research and testing around this uh in the future you know not not just on eight six yeah um, you know like yeah. you said we we released uh you know the one five three hundred blackout which you know had been had been one of those 
customer demand um items for for a while right you know but but you know i I think you're gonna see that um experimented with and and explored uh a lot in the future yeah and i think something to keep in mind when we talk about these alternate twist rates and especially these faster twists for various calibers you know it's it's good to have uh, a reference point in 8.6 to look at this and how it's being used you know because 8.6 is you know you need solid projectiles or a really good bonded um you know it's not just like any random 338 projectile that you throw in there is going to be able to handle you know the one and three twist without really messing with you know splintering out your rounds or or what have you yeah and then the same thing is true with some of these other fast twist rates you know one of the things we've marketed with our barrels for the longest time has been you could pretty much run anything you want through them you know that's you know how we do feed ramps that's how we do you know select twist rates and such but as you get into more of these specialty things faster twist or what have you you know these aren't going to be like your standard barrels that you get from us you're going to have to keep in mind what is best for this twist rate uh or or grain load or what have you so those are things that i think people are going to have to you know pay attention to this isn't going to be your bucket of random reloads uh, oh, yeah. going into guns like these yeah right these these are um much more um purpose driven you know that they, they they're going to be sensitive to to a lot of things you know they're going to be for for particular people who have a particular purpose in in building that you know it's it's yeah yeah not just gonna gonna be able to digest anything you put through it so right all right well let's go through some of the faqs and things that we've uh you know been asked and talked about a little bit on social um we'll link it in the show notes this week if you go to factsandfirearms.com slash blog and click on this episode uh there will be a link to a, a very cool facebook group for eight six blackout shooters and reloaders yeah uh and so we'll we'll have a link there it is a private group so you are going to have to apply to get in but i mean we got in so it can't be that. Yeah, their, <laughs> their screening process yeah. is pretty lax. Yeah, it's pretty light. So it's not an invite only type crowd. Um, but let's talk a little bit about some of these uh, kind of high, high level FAQs. So the first is certainly ammo availability. Um, right now, uh, 86 Blackout is, is not Sammy spec um, and that's something that we've tried to make clear in everything from our posting to our product copy um, that, you know, this is certainly going to be more for the tinkerer, the reloader, um, you know, people who have the 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 time and, and wherewithal to to do this. Yeah. Now, granted, with that how good of a reloader you are is going to dictate how well this is going to perform for you. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, and in that group, there's some more information, you know, keep a, keep an eye on your wall thickness, make sure that you have, you know, that you're using the, the proper loads, um, you know, that, uh, you know, Q is published and we've put on our landing page, but, but even then, you know, you're going to have to do a little bit of home brewing, you know, yeah, there's this. in that Facebook group, there are a lot of people, um, talking about load development and, uh, you know, there's a lot of good information in there. Uh, there are people talking about, brass resizing um you know all the all the intricacies there um but you know also a lot of talk about load development so i would uh, you know really encourage anyone into this um to join and and you know read what people have been doing yeah and when you're on the forefront of something new like this you know whether it's us as a manufacturer or the general consumer you know this is this is not um this is not the same as building a 308 it's certainly yeah. not the same as building any type of AR15 um so like you know and and that's not to say well oh, we're we're washing our hands of customer service or anything but but you are on the forefront of something for those yeah. of you who have bought the barrels or pre-ordered the guns or whatever um so there's going to be some you know some some spin up time here finding what works for you, finding what works for your build. And, and that's something that comes, especially if you're doing, you know, an AR 10 build with this, 
AR-10 in and of itself, as we know, not mil spec. I mean, it's kind of the tinkerer's platform and everything. Yeah. It could do very cool stuff. But the minute you start modifying and changing things, you know, there's there's probably going to be more modifications and changes down your line in your build that you may need to do. Yeah. You know, whether that's swapping to an adjustable gas block, uh, tweaking your buffer, all types of things that, you know, go into this. So I think for the people who are you know, really into the AR-10, this may not be totally new outside of maybe some of the reloading and everything. But, uh, you know, these are all things that, you know, you need to keep in mind. You know, this isn't going to be like how six millimeter arc was or, or, or things like that. You know, this is going to be a little more finesse um, yeah. in these builds. So with that in mind, let's talk about what we did for um, our AR-10 builds. Uh, so we have dubbed these the Fax and Sentinel, which we also have 6.5 Creedmoor and 308 versions available for pre, uh, pre-order on the website right now, uh, but started with these uh, 8.6 builds. We're offering them an 8, 12, and 16 inch. A reminder that the round itself was optimized for a uh, 12 inch, but we did uh, billet receiver sets on these, um, our G3 uh, aluminum streamline M lock handguards, and a new 8.6 uh, muzzlock muzzle device. And then if you're familiar with our, you know, uh, Summit line series of AR 15s, a lot of the rest of this is, is, pretty par for the course on that. So things like ambi charging and ambi safety. Uh, we did have a new trigger though. Yeah. Yeah. We um, are putting in some uh, rise triggers. Rise is working with us um, on a co-branded trigger. So uh, yeah, I've been pretty happy with them. Yeah. So this is like our first kind of run uh, of having a, a Faxon co-branded trigger, which is yeah. pretty fun. Uh, so if you're one of the early adopters of this gun, you'll be one of the first uh, in a full build to get a, a fax and trigger by rise armament. So uh, they've been great to work with. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're good guys. But when we're looking at the build itself, oh, in one more feature, our new AR-10 bolt carrier group is also in there. But when we're looking at these builds um, and maybe for the folks who are trying to build the AR-10 themselves, you know, Jay, what are some things they need to keep in mind about shooting subsonics and supersonic, shooting suppressed or unsuppressed? Like, you know, kind of what are these builds out of the box optimized for? Yeah, so so the 8.6 uh, Sentinel rifles are optimized to uh, cycle and function with uh, supersonic rounds uh, out of the box. Um, you know, so people who are going to be running these suppressed with subs, you know, are, are going to need to do a little tuning, um, you know, whether that's through adjustable gas block or or buffer weights, buffer spring, um, you know, that's that's going to be something that they're probably going to have to determine for themselves, um, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, they are going to require some tuning in in those scenarios. They are optimized to, to function and cycle with 8.6 uh, supersonic ammo. Yeah, very good. And obviously taking into account, are you shooting the eight? Are you shooting the 12? Are you shooting the 16? Some of that tuning, yeah. you know, back and forth is going to vary on, you know, certainly, certainly your barrel length. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, we, we tuned each individual AR 10 barrel, uh, around the concept of, you know, having the gas hole sized appropriately to cycle supersonic ammo so mm -hmm. yeah so that'll be that'll be one of the big things uh, that you'll want to to keep in mind uh, whether you're doing a build or whether you're buying um, one of these sentinels just okay we know out of the box <clears throat> she's ready for supers what do i need to do suppress what do i need to do for subs what do i need to do for subsonic suppress and you know also some of that's going to depend on what type of loads um you're oh, yeah. you're, you're yeah. building out too and and what you're reloading and it's been interesting because i think we've had just like on our internal testing side just about anything that has been available for eight six as far as like different brass uh, we've started sizing our own for testing mm -hmm. uh different projectiles um you know some of the stuff that's listed on you know q's uh load data sheet but also some i mean we we spun some of our own projectiles here yeah. so i mean if, if you get that little recipe right 
um, you know, it's just as impressive as you see in our ballistic gel testing, you know, for Moss and Gorilla and others and, and some of the stuff that uh, uh, Discrete Ballistics has put out. Um, but those are, you know, those are some, you know, high level things that, again, you're going to have to tune this for what you want it to do and, and what it's going to be for ultimately. Yeah, right. Right. And, you know, I, I think that um, one of the exciting side effects of, um, you know, making these these eight, six barrels and and wanting to test them um, and then, you know, making complete rifles is that uh, we as a company have had our hand forced on jumping into AR-10 parts and accessories. Yes. Um, you know, we've we've been doing AR-10 barrels uh, for years. Um, you know, but we never we never offered receiver sets. You know, we had a, some limited selection of hand guards. You know, it was never a complete package. Right. Um, you know, and it was never the ability to assemble a complete package through parts available from us. And yeah. you know, this sort of forced the our hand on um, understanding the intricacies and differences available in the AR10 market. You know, like you said, there there are a lot of competing specs out there you know this is this is not like right. the ar-15 right. um you know and this this has forced us to you know offer things like buffers and buffer springs and buffer tubes and a bolt carrier and a receiver set and hand guards that all work together right. um you know so so i i think that's been a really uh good side effect of yeah of you know making this barrel needing to test it wanting to offer a rifle yeah you know so yeah and i you know there's something that you know we don't talk about it very much on the show but um you know probably even though it's very interesting for us it's probably one of the least sexy parts of our job is just doing like market research and kind of what's yeah. going on. and and we've seen such a huge uptick um in ar10 parts yeah. and accessories in general and you could attribute that to many things. I mean, one is, you know, ammo being more readily available and the cost kind of coming back down to planet earth on some of that stuff. But also too, like, I've been a huge proponent of reminding people like, you know, we just went through two, two and a half years of everybody buying their first five, five, six and doing those builds. And yeah, you know, right. all those new AR owners that are ready to do AR 10 now. People and, are ready to branch out into, into yeah. you know, different things, different platforms. Yeah. More and more states and municipalities opening up, <clears throat> you know, uh, kind of relaxing restrictions on AR based hunting. Um, you know, all of those things certainly play into it. You know, this, this last month, uh, you know, AR 10 barrel sales were, you know, our biggest retail mover. Yeah. Um, so it, it is something that is certainly hot right now and, uh, uh, is something that, I think is, is a lot of fun. I mean, it's, of course there is this stuff. Of, oh, I got to tune it. And is what DPMS is this and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> what DPMS yeah, is this? What is this? Yeah. What is right. this? yeah. Uh, but, it, but it, I think it does for the, for the people who love to build, which is a huge part of our audience. Uh, you know, this is a, this is a fun little challenge. And I yeah. think for eight, six specifically, um, it's going to take this current audience that has bought the barrels, who have bought the guns, who are pre-ordering parts to really show kind of the bigger ammo manufacturers like, yeah, this is something we want. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, we got to kind of help force the hand, you know, for, uh, you know, things like Sammy spec and getting some of the, the big behemoth ammo manufacturers to, you know, hop on board. Yeah. And for those of you who've been wondering, it's not really been projectiles that have been the issue. It's been mostly brass. Yeah. Yeah. Brass has, has been really difficult for people. Um, you know, so I, th I think that, um, you know, as the round gets, uh, more popularity, you know, that's, that's going to ease itself, but you yeah. know, that has been a hold up across the board. Yeah. And on resizing brass. Now we've done it, um, resizing six, five and six Creed more, right? Yeah. Right now we're, um, we're resizing a bunch of six Creed, uh, in the other room and, you know, we're having success with that, but we did six, five also, um, you know, 308 uh, direct resizing is is a little bit of trouble um, having to do with the internal case volume. Uh, so, you know, right now the best bets are 6.5 Creedmoor or 6 Creedmoor. 
Yeah. Yeah. Those are going to be the big things we've re we've repeated this a billion times. So just, you know, a reminder, this is kind of modified, if you will, uh, Creed more brass 308 bolt face and uh, a 338 projectile. So one thing that'll be coming soon is, uh, the bolt action line. So this is our first really like consumer facing, uh, bolt action project um, that we've done. If it, now this predates me, but I think the last time we did bolt action barrels was RPR. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, we yeah. did some RPR barrels. Yeah. Um, 2017, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So like this, and and we've done OEM bolt action in a variety of calibers. Yeah. You know, whether it's receivers or actions or or barrels, but you know, for a true faction branded consumer facing, both for our you know retail network and for our uh, direct to consumer customers, uh, this will be kind of the first taste of of faction full on bolt actions. You know, when we're specking these things out, um, you know, we have three models that'll be available two chassis models 12 and 16 inch and then a 16 inch hunter um that's going to be on uh, more of a, a monolithic stock you know what what are some of the some of the things that you know maybe for people who aren't familiar in bolt action because this is a whole other animal so just, whole not, whole just like ar-15 ar-10 is like a different beast yeah. but there's at least some crossover yeah. it is a whole other animal moving into into bolt action we've done a ton of professional development on it and the and the whole thing but, you know but for the people who are just interested in in bolt action that have maybe been ar guys the whole time you know what are some things that you know maybe you've learned or things we've seen from sourcing that, you know, is, is interesting and sets it apart from the AR market. I mean, it, it really has been a, uh, um, steep learning curve. Uh, yeah. you know, not all, uh, Remington 700 and 700 clones, um, uh, are the same. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. trying to, trying to understand, uh, you know, compatibilities, um, you know, barrel tenon prints. I mean, uh, after aftermarket receipt uh, actions. You know, I yeah. mean, just just sort of looking at at seven hundred and seven hundred clone actions. You know, I I went into it assuming that you know everything was threaded the same. Of course, you yeah. know, and <laughs> that's not even true. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's been um, it has been a really interesting learning curve. Yeah, um, you know, so so I think that uh. I think that it's it's uh, something that you know people should get into. I think it's really really fun. But man, is there a lot of um, there are a lot of curveballs uh, yeah. with with compatibility. I mean, right. you know, bottom metal compatibility, you know, stock compatibility, footprint on stock compatibility, ch chassis compatibility. You know, it's right. it's been interesting. So we landed. Uh, let's talk about our chassis guns real quick. So these are be uh, we we split these up into two series. So we have the Faxon uh, Overwatch, which is the whole bold action line. Overwatch Tactical are going to be chassis guns. Uh, Overwatch Hunter is going to be a stock gun. But the uh, chassis builds, the tacticals, um, we landed on MDT. So what could you tell us about these MDT chassis? Yeah. Uh, so MDT has been great to work with. I mean, and and really all the all the guys in the uh, bolt action world have been fantastic to work with. You know, they, mm. they've been super helpful with information and, and sharing info and, and steering us in the right direction. But um, we settled on uh mdt chassis for for those two models and mdt offers um offers uh two versions of their their lss chassis one of them is the lss one of them is the lss xl um so we have one spec for the 12 inch barrel and one spec for the 16 um you know but the the chassis builds have have been a little gentler uh you know because our our action has um a standard 700 footprint so you know it just it fits right in the uh mdt chassis mm -hmm. and you know the mdt chassis include um you know integral uh, you know bottom metal or, right. or whatever you're gonna call it in a chassis uh so yeah. so it's it's been a little um easier understanding you know how it all works together um yeah 
you know, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about the offerings. I mean, yeah, you well, know, we, we love them, uh, the MDT chassis, you know, we've, we've had some floating around here for a while and, you know, they're really, they're really visually cool, uh, mm-hmm. and they're, you know, ergonomically cool. Um, yeah. You know, and I think that, um, uh, you know, one of the things about, um, eight, six as a round is, you know, because it's, it's optimized to, be delivering um you know so so much punch uh at a 12 and a half inch or 12 inch barrel um you know the the mdt chassis builds are are pretty fun you know they're they're nice and and lightweight builds um you know i I really i really think that product is good yeah and and that's something too again like as we've talked about bolt action and the potential of us expanding our bolt action line you know as as we continue down this path is also realizing, just like we were saying with 8.6 and the AR-10, you know, these are, this is a pretty duty specific round. This is, you know, this is yeah. a hunter's round um, as much as it is a reloader's round, as much as it is a, a tinkerer's round on a tinkerer's platform. But, you know, the, the in the bolt action world, there, there's kind of two main camps. There's the people who hunt with bolt action, and then there's the people who do true precision rifle shooting with these Mm -hmm. and and not saying that you're not going to get you know excellent accuracy out of this but it's not necessarily something that i think in the near future you're going to go see at a a prs match or anything like that this is a hunter's round this is a hunter's round and so you know this this is you know i've seen some of the feedback of like you know uh you know drop after certain yardage and and things like that which again this is this is not a a uh, six five creed more um bolt yeah. action that's not that's not what it's for yeah um, right if you're if you're if you're doing big game hunting if you if you like to you know take down some hogs or elk or you know we have guys here oh, i want to take a take out a deer with it and then, you know like yeah. all that sort of stuff you know that's that's really kind of what it's geared towards and then obviously people have seen so much footage from the guys at q you know going down to africa and taking down these wild just crazy big animals yeah. with these things. Um, but, you know, that is something else to consider, you know, when you're doing the uh, eight, six and a bolt action. And it's also part of the reason we decided to keep, you know, the, the rimage nut style piece. I mean, this allows you with the differences in what reloads might be and whatever action you might have to be able to help adjust your head spacing a little bit and, and also be able to, uh, you know, not saying that we won't have prefits for eight six, you know, yeah. in the future. But as far as getting people in the door and 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 getting familiar with the round and seeing what it's capable for, you know, we we did try to make it as as uh, user friendly for the AR guy that wants to dabble in both action. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I think our our decision to to run these as as remage style barrels, uh, you know, was was really guided by. Um, you know, what the round's all about. And, mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, it was guided by, um, you know, trying to maintain uh, compatibility with all the, the various uh, 700 and 700, you know, clone actions out there, um, you know, but but it also has to do with, with what the round's all about. And it's not, you know, it's not geared for PRS guys. Uh, right. You know, this this is a hunter's round. Um, you mm-hmm. know, I, I think that, you know, the, the PRS world, uh, you know, they don't want remage style barrels right now. You yeah, know, they, they don't want, want remage prefits. style barrels. Um, they don't want nitride on them. They don't want you, you know. Right. It's a whole other. It's a whole other ball of wax. Yeah, yeah, it is. But you know, in in terms of um, a really uh, functional uh, utilitarian build for hunting, uh, you know, we we think that you know coming out with these barrels as, as remage, not remage style um, barrels was the right choice for, for compatibility with various people's builds. Yeah. And so let's uh, talk a little bit about the action and then we'll talk about the hunter and, and the stock that we chose. Um, and then uh, uh, we'll kind of wrap up with some other notes here, but let's talk about the action itself. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, the action, its style, its closest relative um, you know, what are, what are some details on the actions? Yeah. So, um, the action we developed alongside, uh, Stiller. Um, so, so, you know, Stiller has, has a whole lot of experience and knowledge yeah. and history in the, uh, 700, 700 clone world. Um, you know, so, so they worked really closely with us, um, 
in developing the action. Um, and you know, so, uh, it's it, and it's based kind of loosely on the TAC 30. Yeah. If that's if so, for those of you who are in the bolt action world, you know, it's going to be similar to attack 30. And then we did, uh, we did send out for additional coding. So you want to tell. Yeah. Folks right. It's so, in? so, um, right. It's, it's, uh, very similar to, uh, the still attack 30. Um, we're having them DLC coded, uh, by a company armor lube, uh, mm -hmm. who has, a pretty advanced DLC coding that they're doing. Uh, it's actually pretty exciting. You look at their, um, you know, their cycle count on on abrasion and, and wear resistance. It's just through the roof compared to even conventional DLC coding. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they're they're coming back pretty smooth. You know, it's, it's yeah. pretty glassy. The yeah. Yeah. And that is something like, I mean, obviously the ballistics of the round and everything and the energy on target is going to be similar build to build to build. But just the experience of shooting at yeah. AR-10 and shooting at bolt action. I mean, just like any AR-10 to bolt action, there's a difference. Oh, yeah. uh, it's just like a totally different you know, feel and experience. Uh, but yeah, I think these, these actions have felt great. Um, yeah. super smooth right out of the box. And I, you know, much like any other action, if you take care of it, uh, it's going to get better with time, you know, on, on a lot of these. And, uh, you know, I think, I think they're, <laughs> they're good looking, they do the job and it's a totally different experience. Like if you are, if you were nine days out of 10 shooting ARs and then moving to bolt action, yeah. you know, it, it's like, it's kind of like, you know, driving a really nice stick shift. You yeah, know what right. I mean? Like, as opposed to an automatic. I feel like, like it's very meditative. Yeah. You know, I feel like, like a yeah. little, uh, yeah. you know, Zen of shooting with, you know, with these. So, yeah. And what's fun is like, you know, we've taken these to a variety of, of events and, and range days and, and people tend to like, oh yeah, the AR 10 school, but people kind of gravitate to the bolt actions, which yeah. was a pleasant surprise for us because, you know, we don't traditionally have a name in bolt action. Yeah. Uh, so to be able to come to market with, you know, new product, new round, uh, and, and, uh, a new platform for us. And people go, yeah, like that's, that's great. Yeah. You know, this is, this is a good shooting gun. It feels good. Um, and the one that has gotten the most attention, which was a, a surprise to me, uh, not because I don't like it, but just because of our current audience is, it's been the Hunter, uh, configuration yeah. that we have. So that is, uh, you know, a 16 inch barrel, the same thing that are the facts in, uh, attack 30, uh, stiller action. Um, but it's on a, uh, a pretty cool camo stock. You want to talk yeah, about yeah, that stock? It's, um, it's, a uh, Iota, uh, carbon fiber in a pretty cool dark gray, uh, black, um, camo. Uh, using Hawkins bottom metal on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, really good components. Um, you know, it's, it feels great. You yeah. know, I, I really like it. And what is, uh, what are our trigger configurations for the, uh, for the bolt guns? Uh, so all of our bolt guns are using uh, Timney triggers and mm -hmm. uh, Timney, um, a Timney Faxon co-branded trigger. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So these are, you know, these are really specced out, you know, bolt guns. Again, it's not your PRS gun. Uh, right. you know, but as far as being a good, uh, you know, uh, hunting bolt action, uh, even if you're just exploring the ballistics, I mean, there, there've been people that have already been posting on social of their home builds, you know, with our barrels and such with their existing 700 style actions and, and whatever they may have in their, in their gun safe. And some of the hunting stuff that they've brought back, I mean, there oh, was yeah. a guy and his son posting about a hog hunt they went on and just like, I mean, amazing, amazing stuff. The the stuff that you've seen us kind of talk about, you know, hypothetically, and I, and I get it, like we're a manufacturer, we're not going to tell you if something stinks, right? So right. like we're telling you like good things, <laughs> right? but, um, but to see, you know, uh, the general consumer out there and already using this, um, whether it's, you know, they got some of the gorilla ammo off the shelf or they've been reloading their own, uh, and going out and really putting these things to the test in their natural environment has been pretty cool to see, yeah. um, you know, what they've been able to do. And, um, Something that you don't need special Facebook access for our friend Nito uh, yeah. from AP yeah, Twenty Twenty Out. Nito. Yeah, Nito has been great uh, from AP Twenty Twenty Outdoors. He's one of our uh, ambassadors and and uh, affiliates with Faxon. 
um, Nito's fun guy, local Ohio guy. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's been doing some really cool testing with his uh, AR build, his, his Faxon a- uh, AR-10 build for uh, 8.6. Uh, cool ballistic gel stuff. Yeah. Um, he's done some stopgap ballistic gel stuff. So like going through one gel block, exiting and going into another. Um, and also doing, um, uh, he's been like modifying his loads to represent, okay, what would this be like at certain yardages and, and things like that. So if you want a nice yeah. little deep dive, you know, check out AP 2020 outdoors on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, he did a cool video where we, we had asked him if he would, uh, do some gel tests at, at 200 yards. And, and so to, you know, to approximate that he had downloaded some of his rounds uh you know and and shot at 75 to you know to echo the ballistics there uh and you know just really really cool videos i mean he's been such a helpful dude in in you know testing this he did he did some videos on um on brass conversion you know he's he's got a lot of a lot of content created around eight six. Yeah, yeah. So make sure make sure you check him out. I think this has been a, a good project for him. Again, Nito with AP twenty twenty outdoors, and we'll we'll have a link to that in the show notes as well this week. So just go to factsandfirearms dot com slash blog and click on uh, this week's episode. Uh, so this will post I think Friday, so on the fifth, um, but uh, Saturday morning. Be sure you are checking your email. Uh, to make sure that you see the official retail launch of the 8.6 Blackout AR-10s, uh, as well as uh, some links to some other products if you're doing your builds. So uh, whether that be, uh, you know, gas blocks, which is something we didn't mention, but we even made oh, yeah. special gas blocks for these. Yeah, right. So so digging into the, the AR-10 platform, you know, and, yeah. and trying to trying to understand the compatibility, all the parts, you know, we, we sort of stumbled on... Um, stumbled on something that we didn't see an offering in the market and you know it wasn't really evident um in in other ar10 stuff because you know the the gas positions so mm-hmm. so the air um the 86 ar10 barrels are running with uh pistol and carbine length gas systems and uh ar15 gas blocks don't have the correct height over bore for the for the gas tube. So, right. you know, when, when you were putting a gas block on your gas tube was, was sticking up at an angle uh, yeah. into your receiver and, and kind sort of, of real tight on the barrel nut and yeah, yeah. binding into, yeah. into the receiver, into the gas key on the carrier. Uh, so, you know, we designed some, some specific gas blocks for AR 10 that place the gas tube up to a correct height, you yeah. know? So, yeah. Cause I mean, who, who's making a eight inch 308, Right. Do you it, know, like, it so, wasn't evident on, yeah. you know, mid and rifle length gas systems, you know, that that angle is, is you know, way, way shallower on those longer gas systems. But as we got into a pistol length gas system, you know, we realized that, you know, everybody's gas block on the AR-10 is wrong. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. It's they just actually, a little too uncomfortable. I mean, you know, whether that whether that wrong makes a difference, you know, who knows? Um you know, that's probably not binding enough at, at a rifle length gas system to matter, you know, but at a pistol length gas system, it really did matter. Yeah. You know, and and so there, so, there was so, no offering for us to get. We had to design our own. Yeah. So we do have those both 75 and 875. Uh, right. The, the gas yeah, 750, 875. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so those are uh, available on the website uh, under parts and accessories and also in a subcategory for 86 blackout completion parts. So if you are uh, going to build one without an adjustable gas block, uh, check those out. And some of the information that Jay was talking about as far as, you know, uh, clear and silver board and everything that's illustrated in the product photos there. So if you want to see what a standard uh, gas block looks like, um, you know, on these AR-10 pistol and carbine builds versus what it looks like with one of ours, uh, you could check that out. And basically, same DNA as our non-adjustable low-profile gas yeah. blocks. Um, so if you if you like those, you're familiar with those, very, very similar. Uh, we've just in, increased that clearance so you could, one, more easily put these things together. Yeah. Um, and two, to prevent any sort of binding 
uh, or, or issues in, in your gas system for the AR-10. So pretty much everything you see here, um, with the exception of the receiver set for right now, uh, you yeah, know, you could soon. you could buy on the website. But yeah, we're going to have these soon. Uh, we have some more just as far as other new product development coming along. You know, we have some more builder sets planned. We have some more complete uppers planned. So if you're like, oh, man, is Faxon just doing 8.6 right now? No, there's still a ton of stuff in the hopper. We have some more stuff planned for uh, 10.22. We have some very cool new muzzle devices that we're working on, yeah. which I can't wait for those to come out because I want to get Aaron in here to chat with us about uh, some of that. Uh, very cool stuff yeah. um, for, for muzzle devices new pistol barrels coming. So it's going to be a, a nice big fall uh, for us here at Faxon. So make sure you stay up to date. You sign up for that uh, email list. And most importantly for this week, make sure you're checking your email and social feeds uh, on Saturday morning, 8-6, uh, to learn more about the retail launch and, and to get your Faxon Sentinel ordered. Um, and uh Wake I, up bright and early. Bright and early. I know yeah. I will. Yeah. Because there's certain things that our software will allow us to schedule. And there's some things that they won't. Right. So I will be up in the morning. <laughs> Making uh, product live on the website. <laughs> yeah. Can't schedule Can't it. schedule that. Yeah. Tiles. Yeah. Can't do that either. Nope. Um, but uh, as a as a bit of a PSA, I do want to thank all of you who have been patient with us on Instagram. Uh, they have uh, really torqued down on us. Um, but we are not the only ones. Uh, Arrow has been recently taken down. Springfield has been recently taken down. I think Agency and Zev have both. Re I mean, they're, they're really tightening down. Um, and uh, even though we're we're, uh, we're not doing anything against community guidelines, but we all know how it goes. You know, uh, gun manufacturers are not necessarily the priority uh, for the folks over there. So we have created right. a, a backup account, uh, Facts and Firearms Official. Uh, so you can follow that. Uh, and uh, at, at least at the time of this recording, we are live on our normal at Facts and Firearms as well. But I think the best thing you could do to help uh, not only us, but all of your favorite, you know, firearms channels keep liking keep sharing keep commenting you know they they really kind of squelch us down and and don't forget to check out our other platforms recently are we on tiktok tiktok shut us down <laughs> <laughs> tiktok shut us down yeah yeah we tried and we may try again they didn't like my dancing uh you know i don't think the dancing was the issue uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh he was yeah i i mean what were you doing? Whipping Nay Nay? I don't even, what's a cool new modern dance I anymore? I don't know what those things are. Either. The robot. The robot. The robot. Yeah, yeah, break that's dancing. the extent of my he's, dancing. He's, yeah, he turned on some tricky by Run DMC. Yes. He started, started doing the robot. Yes. Um, but we did start an official Reddit. Uh, which we did yes which jay is we on. did so yes, you could jay's jay, on there rob martin uh <laughs> and john from customer service so check those uh check that out find our uh both our reddit profile and our community page there so we'll, we'll start populating some more content in those places uh but yeah you know not just us support your favorite firearms companies on any social media platform that uh, that you're on and again we'll have links to all that in the show notes this week so jay thank you for your time hmm, dustin thank you uh happy eight six everybody we'll see you on saturday <laughs>